Hi, this is Luke from Insta Chaos, and today we're going to take a look at unboxing Lizard Wizard. So, what I really like about Wizard Lizard Wizard was I was actually looking for for a a essentially a light uh, share trading game or stock trading game, and but I also wanted it to be to be a teachable game for my nephews and niece, and so one of the games I found was Raccoon. Was it Raccoon Tycoon? And so that was a a very interesting game in terms of it showed supply and demand. So and I and I figured that that as a supply and demand game is a much lighter version of stock trading, and it's something that I can at least at least uh, tentatively show my nephew and nieces. And then that way they can have a understanding of what I guess stock trading would in would look like in the future as they get more advanced or as they mature more in terms of their lifestyle. But as I guess as a game, I think this would do very well in it. Well, at least Raccoon Tycoon would have done pretty well. So why did I get Lizard Wizard instead of uh, Raccoon Tycoon? Well, first of all, uh, Raccoon Tycoon, if you haven't seen already, has a Victorian style artwork with cats, uh, cats and dogs, I believe. But this one, I prefer this um, this artist. I can't remember what her name is. Um, as you can see, I really like the artwork of this lizard. And you, as we unbox more of it, you'll see what I mean in terms of the artwork. So, and a magical theme appeals to me more than the Victorian style theme. And I think you, yeah. So this here is your, your was it, goal objectives that are set up. I believe this is determined by the number of players you have. So I won't uncut these. No. Here we have your resource token. Here's I believe this is your gold. Your gold coins. Um, the gold coins are worth one victory point at the end of the game for each one. And over here we have the mana tokens. So mana token is your primary resource in the game. The I saw this earlier, and and this is probably the the least exciting thing um, I have about this game is it's very hard to tell what is a hundred versus a twenty. I I think they could have made that a little bit more clearer. I do think that they tried to make it clearer by by putting these um different icons in the middle but it does make it very hard to to quickly glance at your token to see what you have so this is a bit of a shame but other than that I, the rest of the production quality i believe is pretty good here is is the reagents so this is what we're this is our primary commodity this is the resource that we're getting to to then sell back to the market to get our mana I uh, can't remember what they all are, but yep, there you go. This is uh, the tokens to hide your your money, and oh, and the neat part about this is it shows you your your well, it shows here as six, but technically I believe that there's actually nine um, different actions you can choose. So we'll go through this afterwards, but I'll show you when when we get to the, the cards. Right over here, we've got our market. So interesting. Why have they done it this way? Ah, right, it folds up. So you've got a market. It is. I'm not sure if you can see, but it is the. It's double sided, or double layered. Sorry. Um, and then that way they can hold in there nicely. You've got these four achievements which is your overall game achievements that you can try and achieve to get uh, victory points. So these are your different types of achievements that you can get. And this here determines your market. So as something that is uh, less valuable, the lower it is, the more valuable a commodity is, the higher the value of that commodity. And as you sell that many commodities, so let's say, um, what is it? Just gonna quickly take one out. So let's say this was at 10. So for 
every 10 horn you decide to sell um, is, well, sorry, for every horn you decide to sell, you will get 10 mana in return. So if you sold four, so this will drop down by four, one, two, three, four, and you would have got 40 mana for selling four. And then the next person who decides to sell horns, they'll get six mana per horn. So that's what I mean by the supply and demand. I think it's a decent teaching um, exercise for this for, for nephews and nieces. Um, but other than that, it's also a decent game for just a normal adult player. And then here, we've got a board. So you don't really need this, but it does show how everything is supposed to be laid out. And as you can see, I really like the artwork. I will probably, I won't talk too much about this, but I'll probably appreciate this artwork uh, a little bit closer later. Here we've got a smaller size rule book, which is interesting. Most people uh, try to, well, most companies try to make a rule book that will fit the size of their box. It's usually around that big, but this one is relatively small. I've got no complaint about the rule book. It's decent material, it's not the best, but it's, yeah. This is your scoring pad. Tells you how to score for your victory points. And then we've got some component trays, which are very nice. Nice. And then we've got these uh, tokens here. I'm not actually sure what this is actually. I might have to double check that. Your first player marker. If you've had Raccoon Tycoon the Deluxe Edition, you'll remember how these look like. These are big chunky wooden blocks. And then we've got, what do we have here? Magical Forest. What is this? I think this is the treasure deck. Yeah, this is your dungeon to go through dungeons and this is all the different monsters you may uh, You may encounter Maybe this is the Kickstarter version. I'm not sure. I might have to double check what this is now I have one for you uh, hmm, Okay, just to manage the difficulty of it and then here's more dungeon i don't really tend to go through cars but i figured i'll actually show you the artwork for this and i do appreciate the artwork So this looks like all mostly monsters and then you got some treasures So the dungeon ones are interesting um, Was it push your luck mechanic and then you got some traps um, And so I guess Now's a good time to go through this So over here, you've got the first one which is You can gather reagent by playing a card so based on that what you gather is you can choose any three of whatever's on the top uh, This one only shows three, but I think it goes up to to six You could have six possible options and then after you gather your resource you increase the value the blue one increases the value of um, of The different commodities there are so you can see here we get mandrake uh, sulfur and I think, I think I can't remember. I think is that just nightshade was a mushroom uh, and then while you gather those resources in the market, the magic will increase, the Eye of Newt will increase, and I can't remember what this is. Maybe this was Nightshade. So this is what I mean by you play a card, you get some resources, and then you increase the value of other resources. Then your second action is you sell the number of resources, as I explained earlier, and based on that, uh, you get the value per whatever that market rate is, and then you decrease the amount um, of value that the market will be so for example in that previous example I had where 
it was at 10. Uh, you sold 4, you got 40 mana, and then you reduced the 10 down to 6. The third action is you can buy a wizard. Let's see if we can find ourselves a wizard. Nope, nope. This is this one. Spells, wizards. So the next one you can buy wizards like look at these with like the artwork i'm not sure about you but um, i think i've heard a few people refer to this as cubone uh of pokemon and like this is awesome i really like i really like this one do i is this the one i like the most let's see yeah i think the the cubone one's the one i like the most i i'm always have a have a secret passion for for the dark arts so definitely necromancy here so one of the things is you can recruit a wizard and by to recruit a wizard you will essentially say which wizard you want to bid for and then everyone will have a chance to offer a bid or they can pass and whoever wins the bid will take the card um, but if you're the person who who started a recruit wizard bit and you failed, you still get another action. So it's not like you lost an action, which is good. It doesn't punish you for for losing an action, a losing the option. The what well, this fourth one, which is recent spell. But because I have this ready, let's talk about the fifth one. The fifth one is creating a tower. So this here is creating a tower. Um. So you have to either pay this resource at the bottom or a coin at the bottom and pretty much when you do this you can take it in front of you i forgot to mention that the the number of regions you can have is actually 10. so once you have 10 you can't get anything more than that but if you do buy towers you can increase the number of reagents that you can get by one so if i have one then from now onwards i can get uh 11 reagents as, as in my pool so this is the towers they all belong to different schools as you can see all right all right and so the one i skipped was spells i believe spells are here spells is one of the more interesting ones this is the spells is probably the one of the mechanics i also like the most uh it's Essentially, these are mechanics that can help you change the game. That makes that shakes things up a little bit, make things a little bit more interesting. Um, so, based on this, you will do whatever this thing says. So, it will to to essentially uh, research a spell. You have to pay the mana cost associated to the left. I believe most of these are five. I don't think there's anything more than five. So you can research it by by paying the five mana. And if you happen to have the, the reagents available, you can also cast the spell. And the spells will all diff do different things. Some of them will say like 1x, which means it's a once off. You've got, what's it, an infinity, which means it's permanently, um, it's a permanent upgrade to your engine. So this one is for blocking goblins. You've got, what's it, you can get instead of storing uh, 10, you can now store 20 because you've got plus 10, plus every other other tower you have will increase it by one. So yeah, I won't go too much into spells. I'll let you guys look at that yourself. Now, the last one is summon the familiar. So this is supposed to be the six actions, but in my view, the six action is actually um, four actions. Because there's four options you have available to you when you are summoning a familiar. So, the first one is when you're looking at your spells. Let me see if I can bring this board back. Alright. So these cards, the f 
familiar where you have three, or sorry, you have two familiars available. One is your deck, and then two others, and the spells is, you have four spells available, so they'll sit here, and that's your the deck of um, next set of spells. So, the first one would clear out your spells and replace it with four other spells, and then you get to choose one and play it. So, interestingly enough, it, it puts it in this order, but the order here doesn't quite match it. So, option A is actually the bottom one. So, this one here will say, you get one gold for every necromancy card, including this card. So, you'll, you'll start noticing that that has a necromancy. You're, you've got wizards that are necromancies, or who specialize in necromancy, shall I say. And you've got towers that are or fortresses in this case, that also specialize in necromancy, as well as, I believe, some spells? Where are you? So, some spells would also specialize in a school of magic, which in this case is necromancy. So, you'll get one gold for every necromancy card you have across um, all the cards that you may own. And I believe in spells, they have to be, they have to have played. So it, it's not a spell that you can hold and play in the future. It's a spell that you have already played to get that one gold. And a gold, as I said uh, earlier, is worth a victory point at the end of the game. So we've got, in this case, it will tell you what resource you can co collect. So this one says collect three nightshades and you may cast a spell that you've previously researched. But you couldn't cast it because you may not have the reagents at the time or you did not um, wish to play it at that time because you they believe that there's a better timing for that so the different schools will give you different types of uh, reagents so this one says toadstool you've got some sulfur some horn and so forth and mandrake and then the last one is into the dungeon so into the dungeon is this uh push your luck aspect you grab all your monsters and the treasures and then you shuffle it all together so as you're shuffling it then you'll slowly flip up as as many as you wish to go through so the first one i'll get a mask i, I don't think i shuffled this through properly anyway so then maybe a treasure and then following that i may get a uh a monster and if I get a monster I have to decide do I do I back out of this dungeon now should I just run away with my two treasures is my is the two treasures I have enough or should I risk it some more if I risk it some more I could either manage to get more more treasure or I could run into a monster if I run into a monster all of this I lose everything I lose all the treasures that I've found so far and all the treasures will be shuffled back in. However, if I stopped at this point, which means this monster will go back into the deck, but I get to keep these two treasures. And here are the uh, premium components. So before I get into that, um, so these four, which um, I had to go and look up, was it's, to, it's a marker to mark that you have achieved one of the goals uh, one of the four goals that you have to try and achieve. So once you achieve that, you get one of this marker to, to represent that. So let's go into the premium components. Let's see. So this would have been what you would have got if you got the uh, Archmage uh, Pledge. So in here, you can see we've got six playmats. Of uh, just decent quality. It's not double stitch, so it's a little bit like a mouse pad really. But it's still enough for for your table space. I'm not sure if I, if I like this playmat being this big because obviously uh, my table may not be uh, wide enough 
um, to take up this much space. So we'll see how, how often I'll use these playmats. But these are still quite nice. And there are, what was it, six of them? It's, I I would have preferred that they would have done it probably to the size of the of the base game. So what I meant is so if this was the base game, then I would have preferred it to only go probably up to here and then had it stack. But Otherwise, I'm not sure what to do. It's it's not usually a good idea to fold these because if you fold it here, hypothetically, then over time, you'll find that you'll have a mark around this line. So I guess that's for pure preferences. I probably will have to keep a separate storage solution just for the playmats. After that, we have all the individual tokens. Let's grab one of each. All right. So they have a decent quality, decent thickness. I do like the the color seems to really pop up a bit. Um, the fact that that each token has its individual shape, even though it's quite irregular. Do appreciate that kind of effort so it's not like just uh squares or circles that are just just having a printing on them they, they actually cut along the shape uh however for the for the non-premium edition if you get these special components it's also a pain to to punch them out because some of these corners can get can get caught up on the edges but yeah double-sided printing in terms of premium components goes, I don't really have any complaints about these. These are pretty good. Alright, and then we'll move on to the coins. Now, I did see this in another video. and Alright, now the coins aren't too bad, except for the fact that they all base exactly the same color. And it's very hard to differentiate which coin is of what denomination they obviously try to do something different um, in terms of the center shaping but it's also not very clear so if i was to mix this about and then spread it out i would say i could easily tell obviously the largest and the smallest so the smallest is obviously a one the largest is the hundred if you know the game the next biggest is 20 now the 10 and 5, I feel they're very similar in size. And the only way you can really tell the difference is by looking at the shapes in the middle. So you've got a what I believe is hexagon here, and I'm not sure what that is. But looking at that, I'll probably have prefer a star to be over here. Because a star or where the 5 is is quite clear as to whether this is either a 5 or a 10. Uh, there was some, there was some recommendations in Board Game Geek where you can bring a essentially a silver highlighter and probably just highlight the numbers, and then that will, that will clarify what kind of coin it is. And I can see why they did it this way. Um, and I'll get to the gold coins. So the gold coins here is one I prepared earlier. Is you can see that that looking at it, they're exactly the same size. There's no difference. The quality is a little bit on the thinner side. And then you've got the picture on the other side. So you've got essentially the wolf, a what I believe is a raven, and one of the lizard wizards. And I think they did it this way so that when if you're an opponent, you can't look at another player's uh coin status that easily because each of these coins or the value of a coin is worth a point so you don't know whether this is a, a one a five or a ten um, offhand and i think that's why they did it this way but they've also added a the was it the player board or the player screen which can then hide what the values are i think that that's a better solution than trying to make these all look the same because it makes it very hard to to see what we're doing or 
to quickly identify what we have without having to pick these up and keep, and continuously look at them. And with that, that is the end of the unboxing. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you have a great day. Cheers.